And if you are able, would you please rise for this morning's scripture readings? Our first reading this morning is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through 32. Do not, let any, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Our Gospel reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 34. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. You may be seated. I encourage you to have your bulletins with you. Uh, inside you will find your compass guide, uh, different scripture passages that you can reflect on over the week as well as questions to dive deeper into the topics of this particular week of the series. So I encourage you to have those out, but will you pray with me this morning? Gracious and almighty God, as we enter into the season of Lent, as we enter into a series talking about these last words of your son Jesus, God, may you truly enlighten us. May you truly speak so that we may gain a, a new understanding, a conviction, and a path to change our lives. And God, I ask that the words that I speak would no longer be mine, but they would be your words for your people. And so, Creator God, break through our lives and journey of hope with new opportunities, new life, and new power to do far more than we could ever imagine. In Jesus' name, amen. So Lent is a, uh, a special time, a special time when Christians across the globe begin a journey of self-reflection, of confession, of renewal. These are 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Easter, and they are some of the most spiritual, some of the most renewing. This is a season when we try to focus on all that God has done for us, culminating in the, in the death of Jesus Christ on Good Friday and his resurrection on Easter, three days later. This journey is one it, it, that we begin is one of deep soul-searching of deep listening. We traveled this road alone, and yet not alone. Certainly, God is with us as we travel. 
but we also travel together. This is a road of discipleship and of companionship. While we face individual struggles and temptations, we must realize that we have a family of support that goes with us. We rely on God during these times, but we also rely on each other. So be sure to reach out to your brothers and sisters in faith. Let them know how much you appreciate them, that that if there is anything that they need, that you will be there for them. And that if you are in need yourself, don't be afraid to reach out and to ask for help along the journey. We are all here for you. Scripture is full of words written in red. These are the words that, that Jesus spoke to his disciples, to the, uh, to the woman at the well, Mary and Martha, the, the women who came to the tomb, the crowds which gathered to hear his teaching, and they are the words that he spoke to you and to me. These words are important because they give us an insight into the triune God. But there are certain words that seem to carry a little more weight to them because of where they were spoken. And so what I'm referring to is is these words that were spoken from the cross. The pain that Jesus was facing was unbearable. And if you follow the process of crucifixion, you will know that while on the cross, it is incredibly difficult to breathe, let alone actually speak. the words that that Jesus spoke from the cross are ones that we should pay attention to, close attention to. That is what we're doing this Lenten season, focusing on the last seven words that Jesus gave us from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. This first word from the cross is probably the most challenging for us here on earth. The thought of forgiveness brings images and faces to our mind's eye, some of which we don't want to see. Or faces of those whom whom we should reach out to forgive. Or images of of painful situations that, that maybe we've forgiven, but yet not quite forgotten. Are there some who deserve forgiveness while others don't? How do we make that distinction? Who is to choose? Well, before we get to all that, let's look at the the context of where Jesus was and how he offered that prayer to God. One of the biggest questions that come up is, is trying to figure out exactly who Jesus was referring to. When he's asking God to forgive them. Who is Jesus talking to in that moment? Now, the easiest answer to that question is certainly the Roman soldiers. Who did the physical crucifixion. You know, the ones who were gambling at the foot of the cross for Jesus' clothes by casting lots. I guess we could say that they really didn't know what they were doing. After all, they were just following orders, right? Forgiving our enemies is one of those things that Jesus taught us. He said, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It seems as though Jesus is is not only teaching us with his words, but also teaching us with his actions. Maybe he thought we would have issues with this. So he needed to teach us multiple times and ways that we should forgive people who hurt us. I don't know about you, but this has always been a struggle. Jesus, forgive us when we don't know what we are doing. Jesus also could have been addressing the Jewish leaders, the, you know, the Sanhedrin, the ones who were calling death. 
They would have been confused about Jesus and trying to figure out if he was just a prophet or truly the Messiah, God's son. By calling for his death, they were showing how much they didn't know, but also how fearful they were of the possibilities that came with having the Son of God right there with you. I wonder how many times we act like the Jewish leaders. I wonder if we have that same fear of the unknown, about losing the power that we think we have, or being afraid of trusting something or someone that is out of our control. Maybe it would be better if this threat was dead and buried so that we can go along with our plan, our vision, and our lives. Jesus, forgive us when we don't know what we are doing. The disciples needed a lot of forgiveness. We hear time and time again about situations where they they just didn't understand what Jesus was teaching. Of course, they also believed that Jesus was the Messiah, but they had a different view of what the Messiah would do. Thomas doubted. Peter denied. Judas betrayed. And many just plain ran away. The fact that this ragamuffin group of individuals missed messages, acted contrary to Jesus' words, as well as deserting him, leaves a gaping hole in need of forgiveness. Maybe Jesus was offering forgiveness to them for all the times that they had failed in their mission. I know it's easy to fail in our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ. For the transformation of the world. We get in the way of new ministries, slow down existing ones, or just turn our backs on those around us who desperately need to know the love of God in their life. Whenever we turn our backs on those in need, we turn our backs on Jesus. We deny Him in our life. Jesus, Forgive us when we don't know what we are doing. Maybe Jesus' words were for all the disciples gathered there that day. All the people that were gathered. As Jesus stood trial multiple times, receiving judgment in different ways, was whipped and beaten, marched to the center of town, past all the people, up to Calvary, and was eventually crucified. No one said anything. No one stood up to stop it. No one formed a human barrier in the road to stop that caravan to the mountain. No one spoke up for Jesus. Many times in our lives we see people who are hurting in need of someone to advocate for them. Some will have people stand in the gap for them while others remain on the sidelines hoping for someone to help them to speak up for them. Remember the story of the the lame man who had some friends who carried him to see Jesus. And when they couldn't get there, they had to climb on the roof, dig a hole in the thatched roof, and lower their friend down in front of Jesus. He got the healing that he desired. This man had advocates. He had helpers to get him healed. But then I'm reminded about a man who was waiting at the pool at Bethesda. He wanted to be healed. But he didn't have anyone who would pick him up and carry him into the pool when the Spirit descended upon the water for healing. What a stark contrast in stories. As we know, though, Jesus saw the man by the pool that day and offered him healing, even without the water. Jesus was there to speak up for the marginalized. And we need to as well. Jesus, forgive us when we don't know what we are doing. 
As we think of the many different people that Jesus could have been speaking about, between the soldiers, the Jewish leaders, the disciples, or even the crowds that gathered that day, there is still one more glaring group of people that Jesus could have been talking about. There most certainly is another group of people who might not fully understand what Jesus taught. What lessons should be learned, lives that need to be changed, or lives that have denied or turned their backs on him? You see, Jesus is talking to you and to me. We need those words of Jesus to be true in our life. We need Jesus to intercede for us. So many times in our lives, we fall short. We sin in our actions and in our inactions, by what we say and by what we have left unsaid. We deny our relationship with Jesus Christ. We turn our backs on God's grace and mercy. We tell God that, that we can handle things that go on in our lives, that we really don't need him. We got this. Until we do. This relying on ourselves is a denial of God working in us. It is denying the ability of God to work all things for good. And we need forgiveness. I see this image of Jesus on the cross, looking across the crowds, sharing these words. With this Im image in mind, I see the very eyes of Jesus peering through the centuries into the eyes of each and every one of us. These words are spoken for you. These words are spoken for me. Jesus, forgive us when we do not know what we are doing. I truly believe that Jesus is giving us a real and tangible example of not only how God forgives, but also how we are to forgive others even in his deepest pain and suffering, Jesus forgave others. Even in the heat of the moment, Jesus forgave others. How are we at forgiving? Can we even fathom forgiving those like Jesus did? Personally, I think it's only through the power that we receive from the Holy Spirit that we are able to forgive like that. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Words spoken from the cross as Jesus was taking his last breaths. Words spoken by Jesus directly from the depth of his soul. Words that were not just spoken for those who witnessed the crucifixion. Words that are spoken today for you and for me. Do you hear those words once again? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Father, forgive us when we don't know what we are doing. We pray with me. Loving and merciful God, we hear these words of forgiveness coming from Jesus' lips as he hangs on a cross, barely able to breathe, but yet gives us this message. God, we know that there are times that we sin that we fail you in one way or another, that we deny your Son, Jesus Christ. God, let those words be true for us and forgive us, for we don't know what we are doing. Forgive us for the times that, that not only we didn't know, but forgive us for the times that we did know and still sinned. God, speak words of hope, of love, of mercy, 
and words of grace to our souls. Assure us once again that that as we come and we confess that we are too forgiven. Every time we come to you. And so God, I thank you for hearing our prayers of confession this morning. I thank you for the message that you have offered to us. And that message that Jesus gave us from the cross. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen.